The Russian offensive is pressing on the strategic eastern logistics hub of Pokrovsk. An avalanche of guided bombs and infantry has led to Moscow's biggest territorial gains since the spring. Reuters reports that, according to a volunteer, this is contributing to an increase in the number of civilians trying to escape the war. In the past two weeks, the number of requests for evacuation in the area has increased by about tenfold. Russian troops are making steady advances on several fronts in the eastern Donetsk region with particularly fierce attacks near Pokrovsk. According to Blackbird Group analyst Pazi Paroinen, who said Russian troops had taken about 57 square kilometers in a week, their third gain since April after making only minor gains in June. Russia's use of fighter jets to deliver guided bombs is crucial to Moscow's battlefield tactics, said Valery Romanenko, an aviation expert who likened it to a conveyor belt. The Russians are not breaking through our defenses, but pushing them back. Every day, they advance 100, 150, 200 meters using the following tactics. They drop guided bombs. Then a meat assault. They drop guided bombs again. And again, a meat assault, the expert explained. He said the delivery of American F-16 fighters to Ukraine could disrupt that dynamic if the jets could threaten Russian warplanes, but such operations are unlikely for now, given the risk to new pilots flying the expensive planes. Paroinen said Russian offensives in the area of Turetsk and New York, as well as east of Pokrovsk, in the area of Ocheritain and Progress, created a double crisis for Ukraine in late June. According to him, this happened after the Russian offensive in the northeast of the Kharkiv region, which was stopped by Ukraine, but opened a new front and led to severe depletions of the Ukrainian armed forces. Commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian armed forces, Alexander Sirsky, said that the occupiers are concentrating their efforts on the Pokrovsk direction, throwing experienced assault units into battle. In addition, fierce battles continue on the approaches to Chasavoy Yar. On the evening of August the 1st, deep state analysts reported that Russian occupation forces had captured the town of Veselo. In turn, British intelligence predicts that Russian occupation forces will continue their tactical advance in the Donetsk region. At the same time, Forbes reported that Russian troops continue to move towards Pokrovsk. In order to push through the defense forces, they use glide bombs and anti-tank missiles, turning everything into ruins. In addition, Sergei Tsekotsky, an officer of the 59th Yakov Hanziuk Motorized Infantry Brigade, noted that the occupiers are pulling all available reserves to the Pokrovsk direction. Ukrainian military and political observer Alexander Kovalenko analyzed the effectiveness of more than 2 million mortar shells that the Russian Federation received from North Korea. According to the specialist, the quality of these munitions is quite low. After the meeting between Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin, more than 20 million mortar shells of 120mm and 82mm caliber were sent from the North Korea to Russia. Mortar shells are currently the largest component of the ammunition sent from the DPRK to the Russian Federation. In fact, by firing up to 5.5 thousand shots per day with this component alone, the Russian army will be able to ensure a stable level of conduct for a year. But will they be able to do it? Kovalenko analyzes. He draws attention to several aspects. According to the Observer, the first of them is that the quality of North Korean mines, according to his data, is extremely low. This concerns the ammunition itself and additional power charges. With a set firing range of 4 to 6 kilometers, the real range is 2 to 3 kilometers. The accuracy is low. Not all of them detonate after landing. The mortar barrel clogging rate is high, the expert explains. The second nuance is the number of shots. As Kovalenko notes, 5.5 thousand shots per day is a high rate of fire, but in 2022, the share of mortar fire among the Russians exceeded 15 to 20 thousand per day. With the current intensity of fire, according to Kovalenko, the enemy with all combat means sometimes reaches 15 thousand shots per day. The third nuance is that in the third year of the war, the Russians have fewer mortars and without importing them from a third country, millions of mines will be ineffective. Therefore, as the analyst believes, among the containers that are sent from the North Korea to Russia, there may be not only ammunition, but also the tools themselves, 
120mm and 82mm mortars. However, all these points do not all cancel out the acute problem of cooperation between the North Korea and Russia, and there can be no diplomatic solution for that reason. The solution is exclusively of a military nature, connected with strengthening support for Ukraine, Kovalenko noted.